Hi, I'm Todd Blackstock. We have a jam-packed show for you today as we head down to Wrestling at the Chase Fan Fest and catch up with the 2021 NAA Wrestling Champion Trevor Murdoch with promoter Herb Simmons and author Ed Wheatley. NAA women's wrestler from St. Louis, Tootie Lynn, joins us in studio, as does former NFL Super Bowl winner, Carrie Davis, who is now the head football coach at Hazelwood Central. Plus, Angela Sharp gets the inside scoop with Cardinals broadcaster, Benji Molina. So stay with us for this and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. Our first guest today is a professional women's wrestler who recently competed in their historic return to wrestling at the chase. At this point, we welcome Tootie Lynn to Inside Sports. Tootie, how's it going? It's going. Thank you for having me, Todd. I appreciate you. Yeah, I tell you what, it was a lot of fun coming down and meeting you at Fan Fest. I mean, what a fun day that was. I mean, mm -hmm. I walked into the chase. I didn't know where I was going, and I, so I went, you know, I went into the Coruscant room, and everybody's training and you know doing their show prep and. This guy, uh, Bill Corrigan, looks over and says, hi, what are you doing? Please take no more pictures. Do you work here? And I said, no, uh, I'm Todd with STL TV, and uh, I'm here to interview Tootie. He goes, Joey, take him down to right now to Fan Fest and get him in there right now. <laughs> so that was my, uh, my initial experience at the Chase Park Plaza. And I tell you, they put on quite a production on this historic event. Yes, they did. Oh, you, you got lost. <laughs> In, well, in I walked park. in, I went straight to the course and room instead of going down in the fan fest. I so I'm walking in, it's like, who the heck is this guy? I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's like, like, I love the chase, I love the, like, that they have, like, the ballroom, like, it kind of reminds me of the Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Um, but my least favorite part is that there's, like, a million and one ways to get to, like, downstairs and where you need to be. Yeah. yeah. That was neat. I mean, you walk in, the first guy you see, well, you see Chelsea Green being interviewed, mm -hmm. with, you know, with the you know, there's the stage behind it, uh, the ring, and then you've got uh, Billy Corrigan, you know, from the Smashing Pumpkins, the promoter, and mm -hmm. you got Tyrus in there, and Ric Flair, and all these people, it's like, you're surrounded by greatness. It must have been a really neat weekend. Did you, did you hit it off with any of the wrestlers down there? Or like, you probably know most of them anyway, but are any of them like, you know, like, you guys kick it, you're, you're pretty cool with them? Yeah, like, I made a lot of new friends uh, over there, and that's one of my favorite parts about being a professional wrestler, like, when you travel and just make new friends. So, yeah, hit it off with them. You know, I'm looking at some <laughs> of the pictures, and, you know, there's, like, Genocide, and mm -hmm. you know, these cool names, Lady Frost, yes. Red Velvet, Thunder Kitty. Uh-huh, you know. Kiara Hogan, and, like, Mickey James was there. Yeah. yeah, everybody was there. I thought that was really cool, like you said earlier, just being surrounded by greatness and all these people. Like, I couldn't even believe that I was surrounded by all these women because it's like, oh, my God, like, I watched you, some of you women, like, on TV, especially Mickey. When I was younger, I watched Mickey James on TV. I watched Jazz. You even had Awesome Kong there, which I thought was really cool because she's uh, known for being, like, on Glow from back in the 80s. Wow, that must have been totally cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tootie Lynn, now, sometimes you wrestle you know, with a mask on. Yes. And sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I think it's kind of fun. I don't know, you know, uh, I guess it's just one day you decided to wear a mask and, and sometimes you don't. But uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, I saw you wrestle and it's like your mask didn't even come off in right. the whole match. I thought that was, that was pretty awesome choreography. But uh, what are your, uh, so you were the first person announced by Mickey James. Yes. You know, as a, in this historic, because this is like kind of big for women, wasn't it? This mm -hmm. wrestling tournament. Yes. I mean, one of the biggest and, and first times you had all these women in a place like the Chase Park Plaza. Mm -hmm. We all made her story together, um, which I thought was pretty cool because that's never been done uh, at the Chase Hotel. And like, to me personally, anybody can fight me for this, but that was the greatest women's pay-per-view ever. Like, it was so much fun, and, like, my favorite part about it was when all the women came out and everyone was just clapping and then just hearing my city 
cheer for me, like, and then my family being in front row, like, everybody's just, like, cheering and all the ladies coming out. Like, that was my fra favorite part. So you were at an event called The Gauntlet. Mm hmm And that was, like, pretty crazy. Can you kind of tell us what The Gauntlet is and, and how you fared? So The Gauntlet, if anyone is not familiar with The Gauntlet, The Gauntlet match, it starts off with two, uh, two people in it, and then every 30 seconds you have someone else come out, and it just all, it just all depends on, like, who's all in it. So we had 10, 10 women in the gauntlet, but it started off with Chelsea Green and Kiara Hogue, and then you had Bianca come out, and then you had like Thunder Kitty, Genocide, and then like uh, Masha Slamovich. You had everybody just coming out, like all at once, and just going, and just murking each other. So it's just like a free for all? Free for all. How many people a, a, a total were in the ring? Is it three only at once, or does it, does it, does it get bigger? So uh, it gets, yeah, it, it, like I said, 30 seconds, everyone comes out, or every one person comes out, it gets bigger, and then you can only uh, get eliminated if it's um, a submission, and then you tap out or you get pinned, and then like one, two, three. Okay, so each one comes in, they're just like, then there's four, then there's five, then there's six, then someone taps out. Someone taps out, someone gets pinned, like, or who knows, somebody might get knocked out. You just don't know. You never know. I mean, never you, know. these guys flying through the air and body slams. <laughs> I saw some video of you flying through the air and coming off the ropes. Um, <laughs> so there's only one winner, and I think that you were in the ring when it ended. Yes. So the last two standing was myself and Chelsea Green, and wow, she. Wow, that's pretty big company there. Yep. She she won, and I give her her props. Like Chelsea did the dang thing, and I was happy to share that last moment with her. So you were one of the last two people standing. That must be huge for your career. It is. Um, like, like this is being at the Chase was literally my first big, big opportunity out of my career, to four, out of the four years of my career, so yeah. So you're from the area, you uh, went to Hazelwood Central. I did. And uh, you've gotta be very proud, that, you know, the Hawks, what a great program that is. Yep. But uh, I'm looking, you have to be a really good athlete and you have to stay in superb shape, mm -hmm. be flying through the air, you've gotta be limber, you know, to go through all this, it's gotta be a tremendous, impact on your body. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. really sore right now. I am. But uh, I understand that uh, one of the precursors to your wrestling is being a black belt. I karate. am. Yes, for those who don't know, I am a shoot black belt. Um, my inspiration was from all the Bruce Lee movies and one of my other favorite movies, The Last Dragon. Uh, when I was 14, that's when I joined karate and I'm still doing karate. I'm studying it with my sensei. Uh, his name is Sensei Wise, if you all, if you all don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm a black belt. So you're from the St. Louis area, and Trevor Murdoch mm -hmm. is from the St. Louis area, and, you know, Missouri region, and uh, he won the men's title mm -hmm. in 2021, the NAA. And I understand you both had some, uh, had a lot of great fan support, you know, because you're kind of both locals. Yeah, we had, Trevor and I, I believe him and I represent St. Louis very well. We had the fans behind us. We even both had moments. Like the night that I was on um, Empower, I had moments with not just the fans, but I had moments with my family who was also there in the audience. And then the night uh, on 73 when Trevor won, he had that moment with his family. Like when I saw them jump in the ring, just hugging and crying with him, like I, I felt that and I'm just thinking to myself like, oh my God, I can, I can relate to that because that, that happened to me like <laughs> the night before. So like I could totally relate to that and I'm really happy that Trevor won the belt. Yeah, well congratulations on your success there. It's almost like you know, there's like a, a, you know, a new star in the making, you know, for NWA and, and women's wrestling. Uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, I know you've got merchandise and I do. you're on social media. If you could maybe share some of that before we let you go. Yes. So uh, follow me on Twitter at the 2D Lynn and then Instagram is 2D Lynn Ramsey. Same thing with my Facebook. All right, and merchandise, if, you know, I'm sure you're gonna have some, some shirts and things coming out, and mm -hmm. do you have any, uh, any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share that I didn't have a chance to ask you about? Um, final thoughts? Uh, well, I just wanna tell everyone, like to the people, to the wrestlers out there, especially the ladies, like don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Don't ever let anybody discourage you. Just keep going, like, like especially if you believe in yourself, 
then you can do it. Like, don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Wow, great advice. Tootie Lynn, <laughs> right here at Inside Sports. Thank you so much. I Thank love you, your Todd. outfit. I mean, you look like, a, you, it's like a, the hazel, it's like your colors. Yeah, I have to represent my high school. You got to represent, mm -hmm. and I like your little dinosaur here. Reptar, he's yeah. always by my side. Got uh, my back, literally, because I'd be having him on my back. <laughs> all right, perfect. Wait, well, hey, Tootie, thanks so much. We Thank appreciate you. It. Our Inside Sports crew was down at the Chase for Fan, fan Fest. And we had a chat with a soon-to-be champion. Fans, we are at the historical, beautiful Chase Park Plaza in St. Louis. And if you're not here, I don't know where you're at because this is where all the action is going to be. We've got a big fan fest going on today. And I'm going to tell you, this gentleman right here with me, I've known him for a long, long time. And I'm telling you, Trevor Murdoch, what a dream come true. Man, I'm so excited, especially with, like you were talking about, Herb, the heritage. The men that have walked through these hallways, the men that have stepped into the ring inside the Corazon Ballroom, that have fought their hearts out to be world champions, I feel their energy. I feel, I, almost their spirit is here. And then to have got you here, Herb, I mean, I'm almost, my words are coming out a little jumbled. I'm so excited. Well, how, how is it tomorrow night? You, you are pumped. I'm telling you, you've been counting down not only the months, the days, the minutes, yes. but it's here. Tomorrow yes. night, it's all on the line. Yes, there's. I could not have any better setup being in to chase NWA for the world heavyweight title against Nick Aldis. Um, I hope that everything that I've worked for comes to fruition tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to give everything I've got. I'm not going to leave anything. I'm going to leave it all out there in the ring. Um, if it's going to be my last match, uh, the St. Louis folks are going to see everything I've got. Well, I'm going to tell you, the old saying from back in 1959 when wrestling at the Chase first went on television was, the Chase is the place, and that's where it's going to be tonight, an all-women's tournament, but tomorrow night, 73rd anniversary, and this gentleman right here has got it all on the line as he goes after that NWA, the most prestigious title in all of professional wrestling. And I got to say, I'm a little prejudiced that it looked good around your waist. I sure hope, I sure hope so. I've, it's the one championship I've always wanted my whole career. I didn't think I would be here. I'm here. Now I'm going to go handle business and do what, what Destiny's telling me to do. Congratulations to Trevor Murdoch, who ended up winning the title, and to Tootie Lynn for making history. We're going to take a break now, and when we return, Hazelwood Central head football coach Kerry Davis will be on set. Stick around. So there you are. Shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. And joining me now is an individual who won a high school state championship at Hazelwood Central here in St. Louis. Played in the NCAA with the University of Illinois and won a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he's now back with his alma mater, Hazelwood Central, as the head football coach. Kerry Davis, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I tell you what, you know, talk about full circle. I know that 1996 team under Coach Norm Ryan was yeah. a was a special team. I yeah. used to come out to the games. Uh, the superintendent Steve Schmidt was a good friend of mine, as was Cliff Weiss. Yeah. And you guys were pretty high tech back then. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's Sterling Finney. I don't know if it was that year, yeah. but he was around that era. Yeah. And they had some guys. And Cliff was always on the headsets. Yeah. The offensive coordinator and you guys were high powered. How special was that 1996 Hazelwood Central? Team? You know, Coach Ice was very intense. Uh, <laughs> he, he made sure that guys knew what they needed to do, where they needed to be. Uh, we all held each other accountable. I was a sophomore on that team, so we had a lot of great senior leadership. And Jimmy Mitchell, who was our quarterback, Cortland Johnson, um, just a lot of great guys. Milton Proctor, a lot of those guys really, you know, made that team what it was. And and uh, it was it was a fun season for me. I mean, being a younger guy. Helping assist the, the, those older guys win a, win a state championship was uh, 
was a time I'll never forget. That was pretty neat. And then you went on and had a fine career there, and uh, you ended up at the University of Illinois yep. in Champaign. I've been up there, yeah. uh, and that's a tremendous campus. It's a, you know, a big stadium. They had mm -hmm. a lot of hoopla uh, surrounding those games, and it must have been pretty cool playing up there in the Big Ten. Yeah, it, it was. I, this year is actually our 20-year anniversary of us winning the Big Ten championship, so uh, it was just an amazing thing you know, to, to be a part of that championship team as well and and all of the guys that were you know doing great things and and went on to do great things in the nfl uh just really a brotherhood of of, of guys that worked their butts off all year long and it finally everything fell into the right place at the right time for us and you know my my time in illinois is a time that i will cherish <laughs> forever because i made a lot of great friendships and and really family uh, more than friends. Yeah, those are lifelong. And it seems yeah. like Kerry Davis is, is synonymous with championships. I, I, I'd like to say that. You know, I mean, <laughs> you, you win one in high school. And I mean, how many times did, did Illinois win the Big Ten? I don't think too many, many times. Yeah. Not many. Yeah. We'll be in with, our, you know, with Michigan mm -hmm. and Ohio State yeah. and all the great teams up there. And then you go, you make it into the NFL. Uh, you know, you kind of Bounced around yep. from a few teams here yep. and there, but then you end up with the Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers, and then you win uh, in one of the most dramatic Super Bowls in NFL history. Yeah, that that season kind of played out as as most championship seasons do. You know, you you lose some tough games, you win some tough games. Uh, in order to get to the Super Bowl, we had to beat the Ravens for a third time that year, and you know that rivalry in itself is is a tough battle. Just playing against those guys twice a year, and then to have to play them one more time in the AFC Championship game. Uh, probably the hardest hitting game I've ever been around, been in, seen. You know, it's one of those type of games, and and we came out the victors. And then, you know, to go to the Super Bowl against the Cardinals, um, they had a had a special team that year. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Kurt Warner, those guys doing great things. Uh, but we were able to pull it out. San Antonio made a great catch in the in the, in the, in the back of the end zone, and uh, you know we came out champions. So, it yeah, was, so it was how awesome. many people had heart attacks during <laughs> that game? Last play, the first half, Harrison yeah, with a 99 yeah. yard yep. touchdown, and yeah. Kurt Warner rallies the Cardinals yeah. back. And yep. I guess it was whoever had the ball Pretty in much. the last play was going to win <laughs> that game, huh? Pretty much. So who was the most ferocious player that you you faced? Is because you know as a fullback. Mm -hmm. You're blocking. I'm sure there was some pretty gritty middle linebackers and defensive ends and nose tackles. I, I tell people that, you know, practicing every day against James Harrison, against James Ferrier, <laughs> Larry Foote, Lawrence Timmons, those guys prepared me, uh, 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 Woodley, those guys prepared me for anything that I would face, you know, in game. So, you know, if you can go, if you can survive practice and, and, and manage to, to do your job effectively and, and, and do all of those things, you'll be okay come Sunday. So. My family is from Pittsburgh, and we've had, I almost brought my terrible towel, and I forgot. <laughs> you said you forgot to bring your Super I did, Bowl ring. I did. That's all right. Yeah. Well, let's go back to Hazelwood Central. Um, I know the 2020 year is always exciting. I mean, mm -hmm. the suburban north. Year in and year out, right. I mean, you've got Hazelwood Central, Hazelwood East, Pattonville, right. you know, Riverview. I mean, anybody, Rittner, anybody can come up and step up at big times, yep. and, and you don't know who's going to retool the next year, but uh, Hazelwood Central is always in the thick of things. What's your prognosis on 2021? Uh, I, I like our team. we got a lot of seniors on our team. Um, you know, most, most of these guys started as sophomores for us, so they're three-year starters. Um, so they, they, they've grown and, and, and continue to, to get better and become more of a family, uh, holding each other accountable, making sure that everybody is, is working hard and doing what they need to do. And that's the thing, as a, as a head coach, when you have senior leadership or when you have leadership on your team and you don't have to always be the voice of, of correcting everybody and getting everybody in place, your leaders can do that. I think you, you're on your way to having a pretty good team, and I think that's where we are right now. Yeah, so you've got the assistant coaches. They can keep people off yeah. the sidelines yeah. or off the field, and, and they can be, like, yell at them right, or discipline right. them, and then you can kind of be stoic off your yeah, side. something like that. And then you can stay friends with the, you know, well, with the players. Well, I, I, I try to I, – I treat them, you know, I treat them like they're my own kids. I'll be – they're like my, my sons. I feel like I have over 100 children. So I make sure <laughs> that I, I'm hard on them, but they know that I love them. They know that we're going to work hard, and, and at the end of the day, we're going to win games, and that's the ultimate goal, and, and be successful in life. Well, year in and year out, you know, you, you lose players to college. Uh, you got the new group coming in. Right. Who are some of the returning players this year that are going to be, uh, you know, outstanding members of the Hazelwood Central uh, team? Bryson Brown, our quarterback, he's a very good football player. He's 6'5". Um, you know, very good arm, very good uh, talent. He's, he's got a, he's understanding the game more and more as we go. We got a couple of running backs, Lionel Banks and, and uh, Jamarian Price. 
Clayshawn Davis, Armani Turner, uh, a couple of our receivers. Defensively, Eric Brown and Jarrell Cole. Those two guys are, are special talents on the back end. And, uh, you know, we got a, we got a junior, Jaden Trotter, that is, that is pretty special in the linebacker, and Calvin James, who is a senior. He's, he's pretty special as well. So we got a lot of guys that, that have kind of filled in and, and doing their job. And like I said, they've been doing it for three seasons now and, and, and really understand my philosophy as a coach, who I am, what I am, the expectations. And, and most of the time, I don't have to do much, much yelling and fussing because those guys know what to do and they know where to be and, and how to do it. You know, what about the history of Hazelwood Central? Now, you're the first African-American mm -hmm. football coach there, but, you know, at first it's like, wow, you know, that's surprising. But then when you think of, of the great coaches you've had, right. if you have a great coach, the guy might stick around yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. I mean, I, and, you know. It's been, it's, been, uh, it's been some great coaches there that have done some great things. Uh, Steve Norm Miller, Ryan. I mean, yep. going back to him, yep. that was amazing. Norm Ryan, Nixon done, did a great job. John McCullough came in, did a great job. Um, so to be a part of that, that legacy uh, is fun for me. It's exciting. I played there. You know, I know the history of it. Uh, when I came into high school, they, the big talk was Tony Van Zandt. And yeah. everybody knows about Tony, you know, all of the things he was able to do as a high school football player. And we just try to continue that legacy and, and make sure that, that, that our kids understand what Hazelwood Central is, the expectations, um, who we are, what we are, and how everybody around, you know, the city and the state looks at us because we've, we've been doing it for so long. I want those kids to understand it and, and continue that legacy that we have. So how did it all go down? I mean, how did you end up, you know, back at Hazelwood Central? Because, I mean, it's just a long road. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, 15, 20 years later. You know, you're, you're <laughs> Seems back. like a while, I know. Um, well, I was doing radio. I was, I was the sideline reporter for the University of Illinois uh, for 15, 16, 17. Um, and then in 2018, the position came available. Uh, I applied, you know, went through the interviewing process, and uh, I was selected. And, you know, it was exciting. It's something that I always thought about doing, being a part of, coming back to my, my, my alma mater and, and helping out and assisting in some way. Uh, just timing was right. Everything happened to fall in the right place. And um, you know, I was able to, to get that position, and, and here we are now. You know, I've always thought St. Louis had a tremendous talent base in football. And I, I think the, the nation is starting to see that now yeah. as things progress. And there's some NFL you know, Super Bowl champions as well yeah. that have come back into St. Louis in the coaching ranks. Yourself, Kerry Davis. I mean, you got Mike Jones. Yep. I mean, uh, over at St. Louis U across the street. Right, right. Jeremy Macklin yep. over at Kirkwood right yeah. now. You know, it seems uh, like a really cool thing when you got some NFL players and guys that played postseason and Super Bowls are coming back yeah. to coach and mentor these kids. How cool is I, that? I think that's probably the most spectacular part of it. I mean, we're, when we were in high school, I speak for myself, when I was in high school, seeing NFL players or being around NFL players was not something that you know, was, was available for us. We didn't see many and we didn't talk to many. So, you know, for us to be able to have those experiences, going to college, going to the NFL, you know, the ups and downs that you may have throughout your, your entire career, to be able to come back and, and give that to these young men is, is special for me. And, you know, I hope that the young men that, we all, that we're coaching understand that and, and, and respect it and appreciate it. Um, because it's, it's, it's definitely fun for me. And I, I think they enjoy having us around as well. I mean, I don't want to put you on the hot seat, but, you know, this is a pretty cool job to have yeah. at Hazelwood Central. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you do, you know, there's always people right. trying to, you know, what if you know, they're in college, any aspirations right. to, to coach at the next level? Or you kind of like where you're sitting I enjoy right coaching now. high school. Yeah. I enjoy being around these young men. Um, you know, I was always taught, coach the job that you have and don't yeah. worry about the next one if something comes up. Uh, but right now we are, we are locked in on the 2021 season and, after this, we'll get ready for the 22 season. So we, we have to take it one step at a time. I saw where you were inducted into the Hazelwood uh, School yes. District <laughs> Hall of Fame. Yeah. And I watched your little speech there. It was yeah. kind of neat. I think Hazelwood East got a little yeah, yeah, love yeah. that night, yeah, too. But, yeah. uh, but you were up there. And, and that must have been a really proud moment, being honored by the school district, yes. you know, for not only your, your playing prowess, but mm -hmm. I guess your character and, and everything else as well. Yeah, that was an exciting time. I mean, that was a special moment for me, for my family. Uh, my kids were there. Uh, just to be recognized in that, in that manner um, by the school district for all of the things that I have done on the football field was, was special for me. And it was special for me as well because Hazelwood East, their state championship team was there from 95. And I kind of, even though they were our rival, uh, I looked up to a lot of those guys. We were talking about Ricardo Rose. He was a special football player. I was just a freshman when, when they won that state, state championship, but I was able to 
watched them, see what they were, they were able to do, and uh, had a couple of guys end up being teammates in college from that team. So it was it was just a, a special event, a special night uh, for myself and for my family, and just to be be a part of it, I was extremely sure. thankful for it. Any final thoughts before we let you go? Anything you'd like to mention? You know, we just we're just excited about the the season this year. Uh, like I said, we got a lot of kids that are special, got a lot of talent. Uh, and I think we're going to do some pretty great things. So I'm looking forward to, to this week versus Pattonville. Uh, and then we go on from there and, and take care of, you know, whatever take care comes of business. in front of us. Yep. Well, congratulations and good luck, Kerry Davis. We appreciate you coming on Thank Inside Thank you so Sports. much. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Well, now we're going to send it over to STL reporter Angela Sharp. And she's got a very special interview with the Cardinal broadcaster. Thank you, Todd. Look who I caught up with. Two-time Gold Glove winner, Benji Molina, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, no, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I love talking baseball. I love talking life. So thank you for having me on your show. And let's, let's kind of go through that baseball a little bit. So everyone knows Yachty here in St. Louis. Of course, you played for the Texas Rangers, have two Gold Gloves. Jose also played. I know he played for the Tampa Bay Rays for a little bit because yep. when I worked there, that was a big deal there, too. What is it about this family of yours that it, you're just so good at baseball? I think uh, it comes from my dad, and obviously my mom loved baseball. That's how my mom met my dad. Oh, is that actually right? Actually, at a game. Yeah, she, she met him, started talking to him. He played right field at that time. Uh, but that's how it started. You know, that's how our family did. I mean, um, I played with four teams, actually. I played with the Angels first, and then I went to Toronto for one year. Oh. I ended up in the Giants for three and a half, and then ended up in, in the Rangers, which it was awesome for me, too. Uh, but to win two World Series championship with one of them with my brother, Jose. Oh, I didn't remember that. You're right. Yeah, so to do that, imagine how we feel. Imagine how inside what your dad is, is sacrificing so much, and your mom, like I said, we have to bring mom. So both of them sacrificing so much for their kids, and all of a sudden they see this, uh, it's just unbelievable. It's a great feeling for us, and that's why we try to pass it on now. I didn't even remember that, but you're right. I mean, that is an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, it was awesome. I told my brother, hey, in the eighth inning, I said, hey, don't come to me when we win, because we're going to cry on TV right away. <laughs> right. And he goes, okay, okay, I'm going to go around. And then before you know it, he was coming right to me. Of and course he was, was, because like, that's who oh you want. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, so. you're, you're the older brother, so everybody yeah. wants the older brother to, yeah. to... So it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, baseball, my career was awesome. Uh, now I have a new career, so just doing the broadcasting here for the Cardinals is amazing. I tried coaching twice. I coached here in yes. 2013. Yeah. When we went to the worst years, we lost. But uh, and then the next year, I ended up in, in the Rangers as a coach. But after that, this is my career now, you know, broadcasting Spanish. Uh, you know, the voices. Yes, you with do Polo. The, yes, you with do Polo the. Asensio. You, yeah, you do, do the that. color commentary with Polo on mm -hmm. the Spanish radio broadcast of the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. Let's tell everybody where they can listen, where they can find that, where they can listen to that. Well, luckily, it's uh, La Tremenda, 880 AM, and you can find us there every day locally. Uh, MOB at bat, you can subscribe and go in and find the Cardinals game. Uh, also, thecardinals.com. So, all those three places you can find us at any moment. And, of course, Fiesta Cardinales. Yeah, there you I'm go. I'm getting better at it. Uh, that's <laughs> coming up uh, September 19th September up in the 19th. Budweiser Terrace. So that's stlouiscardinals.com yes. slash theme ticket. And I'm sure you guys have a bunch in store for that night. Yes, we got, uh, we're trying to get a mariachi band uh, up to the terrace, you know, over there. And then players. Yes. The players are going to come over. And who knows? We might sing. So we're working on it, karaoke over there everywhere, you know. So... We we'll probably have a couple of songs for you guys, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Last one, we had a blast. Plus, you can get a jersey. Yes, you said, with you the know. Cardinales, Cardinales on it. Cardinales on it. So it's a, it's a special item. You don't get it every day. Right. You just get it that day. So get yours. That's right. St. Louis Cardinals slash theme. Thank you so much, Benji. Back to you, Todd. That's our show for today. We'd especially like to thank the NWA, the Chase, our studio guests, our crew, and the St. Louis Cardinals for making this show possible. We'd like to thank you for watching Inside Sports on STL TV. Experience St. Louis.